The first thing I noticed was his graciousness, his smile, his reassuring baritone, his deceptive sense of humor, all qualities that helped him wear so effortlessly a heavy burden of expectation. Reverend Pickney embodied a politics that was neither mean nor small. He conducted himself quietly and kindly and diligently. President Obama eulogizing the late South Carolina State Senator, the Reverend Clem Pinckney. Reverend Pinckney and eight members of his congregation at Charleston's Emanuel AME Church were gunned down two weeks ago following a Bible study. Regardless of party, we expect our presidents to serve as our national comforters in chief. Recall Ronald Reagan after the explosion of the space shuttle Challenger or Bill Clinton in the wake of the Oklahoma City bombing. And Mr. Obama seemed poised to strike all the right notes last Friday afternoon. But sadly, the eternal message of God's grace gave way to the earthly temptation of political posturing. Rahm Emanuel is no theologian, but he infamously advised this president and fellow leftists to never let a crisis go to waste. And our chief executive flagged his troubling transition by bringing up the Confederate flag that's being brought down. By taking down that flag, we express God's grace. But I don't think God wants us to stop there. And President Obama did not stop there, invoking the divine to turn divisive. For too long, we've been blind to the way past injustices continue to shape the present. That's right. Perhaps we see that now. Perhaps this tragedy causes us to ask some tough questions about how we can permit so many of our children to languish in poverty or attend dilapidated schools or grow up without prospects for a job or for career. Maybe we now realize the way racial bias can infect us even when we don't realize it. So that we're guarding against not just racial slurs, but we're also guarding against this subtle impulse to Call Johnny back for a job interview, but not Jamal. No, Mr. President, it is not a preference for Johnny over Jamal. It's the bitter harvest reaped by your own misguided economic policies. The fact is, African-American unemployment under President Obama is the worst in our nation since the Great Depression. Mr. Obama routinely confuses his rhetoric with reality, and since he denies any responsibility, it ensures that he will demonize, even while claiming insight into the divine. By making the moral choice to change, we express God's grace. Amen. But God's grace is a gift freely given. Yet President Obama has the audacity to insist that embracing his continual grievance mongering, or as he defines it, change, is a way to express the unchanging gift of the Almighty. There is one unchanging aspect to President Obama's outlook. Our commander-in-chief is not a comforter-in-chief. Instead, he's the agitator-in-chief. And that's the way I see it. Now, time to hear what's on your mind via social media. A comment from M.W. who writes in about same-sex marriage. Writing, J.D., we always say it's ridiculous. It'll never happen. Then it happens and we move on to the next outrage. Those who say the clergy won't be forced to perform these ceremonies, that is, weddings of same-sex couplers, are uh, same-sex couples are ignorant enablers. Our next comment from Alicia, who writes in about the Supreme Court and voter ID. She writes, I cannot believe the Supreme Court's decision that ID or proof of who you are isn't important at voting polls. I think we need to recall most of these judges. They're leading us into the depths of lawlessness and no morals. This is such a sad time for our country. I'm ready to vote for Donald Trump for president. We'll have more of our interview with Donald Trump tomorrow night. For now, thanks for watching. Stay brave, stay free, stay tuned.